there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have eight odd white wines to taste and I've, um, in order to work out the order in which to taste them, I've done it in a very scientific principle. What I've done is I lined the bottles up and I looked at, no, not the alcohol levels, but the height of the bottle. Uh, so I'm doing the four tallest bottles first and I'm doing the four squatters bottles when I finish this lot. Scientific, not very, although the weird thing is, I think if I'd actually done it with some degree of intelligence, in other words, thought, well, these are maybe on the uh, slyer, shyer, more fragrant, lighter-bodied style, I'd have ended up with these four. Anyway, let's see how we get on. Uh, I have got four, no, three stroke four different countries. We'll come to the three stroke four when we get to wine three, but um, first wine, we're in France, in the Languedoc, in southern France, and this is Tesco's own label, Picpoul de Pinay. Pinay's the region, Pickpool's the grape, and uh, I used to think of this as like the Muscadet of the South, uh, but what seems to have been happening in, uh, in recent years, it, it's beginning a bit fatter and fleshier, as Muscadet has, of course, but um, is it fatter and fleshier and all the better for it? Sometimes I almost miss some of that briny bite that I used to get, but let's see how we get on with this one. And this has got a little bit of briny bite. It's also got this um, slightly salty, I mean, we're close to the sea here, we've got a slightly saltiness, um, but on top of um, uh, f cooked green apple. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, it has got this crispness and this green leafiness, not leafy in the way that Sauvignon Blanc has got. It hasn't got that catty edge, but it's got this dry grassiness. If you imagine something almost shabbly like maybe even if you want to put a touch of the smoky, pepper of Grunewald Liner in there, but um, very tasty wine. I can't remember how much it costs, but it's in their finest range and um, it um, almost lives up to its name. Let's see how we get on with another of the big boys. Sainsbury's own label here. So um, Tesco has finest as their top of the range. Um, Sainsbury's have to taste the difference. And this is their, uh, we're in Italy now, their Dicchio di Castelli di Gesi uh, Classico 2010. Give it a whirl. And you probably can't see against this, um, the man from milk tray type of background that I'm wearing. Uh, but there's a slight, um, slight spritz to it, so a few bubbles of, of uh, carbon dioxide rising to, to the top of the wine. Um, what a lot of people bottle it with that bit of uh, CO2 in there to uh, keep a bit of freshness in a wine. Now, Verdicchio is a weird grape, so if you get it when it's young, it, it can feel almost like, like I spot the wine. But here, it feels like it's got past that spot the wine stage, and um, it, this almost clay-like earthiness is coming up, uh, as along with um, yeah, a rich, um, almost peachy-like character. Um, it, weird thing is, I've had old bottles of this alongside old bottles of Chablis, and um, sometimes you think which one's which. Uh, strange that a completely different grape in a completely different part of the world should yield similar results when, when the wine's about four or five years old. But yeah, there's that um, uh, life beyond fruit, the nuttiness, and uh, maybe this undercurrent of earthy minerality too. Yeah, it's a bouncy, lively wine. Um, some peach. It's more on the uh, that slightly um, fresher, the nectarine side, rather than the the slightly lush peach that's gone a bit soft and wobbly. This has still got bite and tang to it. And again, as with the pick pool, uh, almost a slight salty character, brininess coming through, just freshening up the finish and um, making it a pretty tasty six-pound bottle of wine. I like that a lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, this is the one where I was going three stroke four countries because we are in the Alto Adige in northern Italy, uh, where the, a lot of the road signs and, uh, are in German first and Italian second, and where the, the language that a lot of people speak is exactly the same, and the cuisine is more hearty Central European. Uh, but um, hey, um, this is the. Uh, I've had some wines from this uh, Tenute Costa before. Uh, they've got estates in a few parts of Italy. I had something of theirs from uh, Morolino di Scansano, had a Barolo of theirs. This is uh, Alto Adige um, from the Val Isarco, and it's their Kerner Isaacthal, and I think Lanhoff is the name of the winery. Now, Kern is one of those grapes, I think, that was developed in um, Geisenheim, uh, where they studied, uh, studied viticulture and 
viniculture in, in, in Germany. And uh, it's a good, if it's the same as other crosses, Riesling will be the main partner, and then there'll be another grape in there. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like Riesling Silvana Cross here, a bit like Muller Turgau is. Uh, and so what you're getting here when you stick your nose in, there's this fragrant, floral, uh, not extremely subtle flavour. Uh, the weird thing is that um, in Alto Anice, uh, you do get uh, subtlety that you don't get when, you, when they plant these grapes in Germany. So when I say not very subtle here, yeah. There are some examples of Kerner that it's almost like you're sniffing a concentrated potpourri. Here, it's um, yes, there's a bit on that oily rose petal, uh, very fragrant. Some of that Gewürztraminer spice, ginger, lychee edge. Smells like it's going to be very rich but dry. It's quite a big, powerful wine, um, and it's just, uh, it reminds me of um, Alsace wines. They, uh, in Alsace, they, uh, uh, where, they, where they do those blends, they're called things like Edelsvicker. Uh, you've got, uh, it feels like there's characteristics of more than one grape going on there. So you've got the, um, the, the almost like the texture, the rich texture, something like Pinot Gris, uh, these aromatics of um, Gewürztraminer, and then a slight smokiness, this uh, sauerkraut, sausage-friendly smokiness that, uh, of, of Silvana. Maybe it is a bit too much, uh, certainly to drink by itself, but it's not gone over the top into that oily, uh, yeah, heavy, uh, rather clumsy, bitter edge. What happens, uh, th th those sort of compounds which give it the aroma, give it the fragrance, uh, if you over extract them when you're doing the winemaking, if the skins are in contact with the juice for that bit too long, you end up with something that is too much makeup, too much perfume. Here they've just about got it right, so you notice them, but they're not taking over the wine. But won't be for everybody that one. Interesting though. Uh, okay, let's head to Hungary now, and uh, this is the Beres Loxe Ferment 2007. Uh, ferment, uh, the main grape of Tokai. There are other grapes there, but uh, uh, a lot of the ones you'll find are virtually all Tokai, with the others in there, for to have a little bit of seasoning. And this is completely different. This is, I mean, chalk and cheese here. This reminds me of Semyon. It's got this waxy, heady heaviness. Heaviness is maybe the wrong word, but it's like um, if you imagine um, a dry, you know, the innards of a crunchy, um, or are they called violet crumble in Australia? Whatever they are. Um, but yes, the, the innards of those that have got that sweet honeycomb uh, flesh. Here, uh, you've got that, that uh, dry honey character, and, uh, but it feels like it's going to be a weighty wine. Uh, you can understand why they put other grapes in with ferment. Here, it, it's, oh, I suppose, almost like Sauvignon Blanc in, uh, uh, when they're making uh, white Bordeaux. You need something that adds a little bit of um, uh, fragrance and finesse. Here, it feels like it's going to be quite weighty. Too weighty? Let's have a see. And it could pass for um, high-class, old, semi-on heavy, dry white Bordeaux, that. Um, there's this richness, there's this um, lovely, broad, uh, yeah, honey, honeycomb, honeysuckle, those type of characters. Fruit flavours underplayed. It's uh, Maybe there's a little bit, bit of vague peachiness, maybe some um, uh, more exotic fruits in there, maybe a bit of quince, but there's this nuttiness. Hazelnuts, uh, maybe a touch of almonds in there. Uh, and it's just broad, fat, but not too fat. It, it's sort of like uh, it, it, when you see a healthy sumo wrestler. It's that sort of wine. It's uh, it's got it's, it. It won't be for everybody. Uh, you'd almost be tempted to get something a bit like the pig pool in to uh, freshen it up for some people. But like that, I'd love to have it with some. Uh, some of those ever so slightly uh, sweaty cheeses, you know, the ones that, that you put down and, uh, yeah, moisture builds up on them. It feels that Gouda friendly. Um, intriguing wine. Um, and um, favourite of the one? I don't know. These, these have all got something to say. I, I like... I like all of them. Maybe the, the, the weird thing is that the Kerner is my least favourite. And... Uh, but... The other three, on any occasion, um, I'd, there'd be one of them that would suit it, I'm sure. Maybe I need to go and find out. See you soon.